I like to turn to the first slide. Um, Luan will. Uh, this is the agenda of today. Luan will tell us uh, about the um, um, format of the C by C reporting, uh, the timing, and the, the channels of disclosure. Uh, subsequently, Igor and me will uh, um, deal with some frequently asked questions. We have a lot of workshops and a lot of discussions, uh, not only with uh, OECD and the ministries of finance on what their expectations are, but also with a lot of corporates who, who need to deal with the practicalities of the C by C. Then uh, Christian will lead uh, the, the demonstration with, uh, with the software tool using a simple service transaction and see how that service transaction eventually lands up in an automated manner in a, in a C by C reporting. And then last but not least, uh, we will address some uh, what to do next points uh, to keep the whole session uh, fairly practical. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to turn to the next slide and invite uh, Luan to uh, take the next slide. Thank you, Steve. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Um, it's my uh, honor to, uh, to lead you to three uh, core items of this uh, CBC report at uh, format and the timing as well as the channels of disclosure. So three modalities which are core to the implementation which uh, hopefully will be uh, elaborated uh, during this uh, calendar year. As to the format, point one, um, well, format is especially uh, applicable to the model template that is Annex 3 to the new Chapter 5 which is uh, replacing the old Chapter 5 and which forms the basis of the um, the CBC report, uh, uh, so number 14, which has been launched in, uh, during September uh, 2014. <coughs> uh, the format is, is clear in the sense that, well, as you can see, the model template uh, consists of two uh, main parts, uh, uh, or three main parts, uh, the master file, that's the first one, the second one, the local file and the third one that's the, the most important of, uh, at least from, from the perspective of being able to mm -hmm. to cope with uh, the uh, questionnaire and with the, the, the demands from the from the tax authorities and that's the model template of country by country report also split into two uh, tables table one the overview of the allocation income taxes and business activities and table two it's the constituent companies and then the additional form to uh, to uh, some uh, to add some some uh, remarks from our side. Uh, this format has been published. Um, the intention is that it will be implemented uh, well during summertime, at least uh, uh, at the end of the summertime at the latest. But it can be in an earlier moment as well. Uh, the report gives some some detailed, uh, well, general and more explicit detailed um, explanation uh, concerning the the format right now, and that's called specific instructions and general instructions for NX3 to chapter five. So we have to do with that, and then we can see how uh, things are developing. But it is advisable to adjust. Um, uh, in company to uh, start uh, developing uh, procedures, uh, formats, uh, models, governance, uh, in order to to be ready um, at the moment that the, the implementation, the clearance will be given to the fullest extent. That's as regards the follow -up. Second point is timing. Um, Timing, yeah, well, recommended implementation by MSEs is anticipated before 1 1 2016. That's to say that the first CBC report in relation to your financial year 2016, so that you have to, to prepare for that as well. Um, there is one main exception that is part of the 
three board to which three presentation is asked, so it can change. That, uh, well, in principle, the, the, the reporting has to be done, has to be uh, um, delivered no, no later than the due date of corporate tax return. Uh, that's the principal rule. Um, but one exception, if financial statements are finalized after due date of the tax return, that case extension will be given, yeah, but not due date of the tax return, but just one year, following the last day of the fiscal year of the ultimate period. So the last day, 31 uh, of December, fiscal year, but then the fiscal year of the ultimate period. So you have to, to take uh, resort uh, to, uh, to, 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 to take reference to the customary uh, annual year of the ultimate parent. And it's not clear whether um, the due date of the tax return is the due date of the tax return in a normal way or the extensions of that uh, tax due date are also taken into consideration. All these kind of the, the, all these modalities and complexities will be cleared up in the months to come. And then the last point that regards the channels of disclosure. So, well, how is communication taking place? Channels of disclosure, for instance, are tax inspectors of home and host countries, that speaks for itself, or other layers of tax administration. And that can be competent authorities. These are uh, very important in uh, case uh, APAs are being concluded, or, or multilateral or bilateral, whatever is at stake. And also the ATR teams, that, that's uh, for the non transfer pricing uh, questions, items. Um, well, there are a couple of, of, of questions to, uh, to, uh, which would be to have to be answered. Reply has to come to that, and we will. I think it's good to, to, to revert that in the, in the representations. Um, first one uh, is it necessary to modify the local formal? tax law or regulations, locals, so the domestic tax law, in order to adapt these to the communication disclosure channels required. And the second question is, with reference to action point 15, the, 15, the multilateral treaty, which will uh, uh, cover uh, all the, the other action points and, and uh, enable the, the tax authorities to swift uh, uh, elaborate their, their existences and their demands. Well, uh, is this multiple tax treaty uh, grants tax will be granting tax inspectors or other the full authorities to demand CBC reporting from itself, or have they assume uh, the multiple tax treaty to be what, what is called in international law to be self-executing, or do they have to be absorbed in domestic law? So it's also a question point. Um, and then the other last question point is the or penultimate question point: exchanges with the ex, uh, interaction with the exchange of information clause in the tax treaty. You know that exchange of information is very important in order to create transparency. We have also uh, you can also make reference to the uh, separate contracts uh, for exchange of information. Uh, Sensor three piece uh, which have been concluded with many between many. Countries, and well, the question is whether there is interaction. How this interaction will be uh, modelled uh, in uh, the time to come? And the last point is well, if a court case is instituted, um, what is the extent to which uh, the information uh, available uh, by means of the country-to-country -country report has to be given to the? To the court, and by the court means also to the court, yeah, that it could be a certain amount of public publication in the jurisprudence, in the, the other uh, uh, reflections, or of, of, of um, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the, the encyclopedic uh, uh, reference of text treaties like, like the. Uh, as you have in, in the instruction material for universities, and to what extent is it necessary to, to include some confidentiality in order to forego that uh, the 
taxpayer at the, the court will be uh, set at a disadvantage, in a competitive disadvantage. So that these uh, questions have to be answered still in the coming months. So I think that this is what I have to say, and I would like to give the microphone back okay. to Steve. Okay. Thanks, uh, Luan. Yeah, a few uh, a few remarks on the, on this. Uh, I think uh, the the information. Um, uh, captured in the C by C is already in a lot of local tax laws uh, mandatory to disclose to the tax inspector. So I'm not sure the tax inspector will need a formal base like Luan is uh, is referring to to uh, obtain that information from a from a taxpayer per se. Um, one thing I think we should um, notice, and I, I probably should have mentioned that in the introduction, that. Um, as Luan said, there's three layers of documentation in Action Point 13, the global <coughs> documentation, the local country files, and the C by C. It is very explicitly mentioned by the OECD, maybe not 100% clear enough um, that the C by C cannot be uh, seen as a set of facts based upon which taxation takes place. I think that's a very important statement to make. So it is a, a TP risk assessment tool by governments. That means, yes, if you report all the income in one line and there's no people in the other column, you might have an issue. Uh, that's basically the type of, uh, the high level type of assessment tool this C by C should be, uh, uh, should be used for. Um, Bear with the OECD because this is the first time in their whole life, uh, at least in the area of taxation, they have to become very practical with a table like this and come up with uh, uh, prescriptions on how to fill out this table, which will happen as Juan indicated uh, um, uh, during summertime, detailed instructions on how to fill out this C by C will be published by, by the OECD. But again, um, it's also OECD's first time, so uh, there's um, nothing carved in stone yet um, in, uh, in the way this all works in practice. Okay, if we move to the next slide, uh, Igor and I will address a few practical points uh, on this uh, C by C reporting, which we already come across and had discussions on with our clients. Uh, first question is, uh, what is the accounting standard? and the obvious would be that you fill out this uh, form uh, based on your uh, IFRS or US GAAP uh, accounting standards. Uh, it's readily available at year end and it's uh, easier to capture in a digitalized way. Um, or you have to wait a little bit and use your local statutory uh, GAAP or, um, or tax accounts, um, which obviously would delay the whole thing. The benefit of uh, using IFRS and US GAAP accounting uh, references is also that you have uh, a uh, consolidation of all intercompany transaction vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis reference points being your IFRS accounts. So there's an add up of all the numbers which makes sense from an accounting perspective. While typically just adding up all the taxable amounts in, in your tax returns from all countries um, there's no checking mechanism on, on that, uh, which probably means it doesn't make a lot of sense to present it. Um, second question, I think, is uh, very, uh, a very, a very obvious one. Should all intercompany entries be shared with all tax inspectors? Um, I'm afraid there's only one reading the OECD uh, allows you to, to be making, and the answer is yes. You need to share everything. Uh, about, everything with everybody. Um, this is, uh, if I give two examples, uh, uh, would this also apply on intercompany loans and intercompany interest paid? We don't know because uh, if you read action point four, uh, it seems like uh, the OECD G20 tries to combat excessive uh, loan or interest positions through uh, a formula-based restriction on interest deductibility so you can deduct, uh, say, 25 to 30 percent of your EBIT as a max uh, tax deductible item. So at that stage, I would say then the C by C reporting doesn't make sense. 
Uh, another question we were uh, we were involved in: uh, Should you also uh, report your transactions between, say, a head office and a branch? The answer is yes, because on the second table in the C by C, there's a notion that you can have, say, a French entity uh, as as one uh, entity, and but you can also have a French entity where the tax jurisdiction. Um, is different from the, the tax jurisdiction of residents, uh, say th this French uh, uh, company has German operations, then you already have two uh, entities to report on. Um, question three and four, I would like to take those uh, together. Um, what categories of data can you leave out or in? Uh, in other words, how flexible is the C by C in its reporting? How can you slice and dice it uh, to make it acceptable for the tax authorities? Uh, there seems to be, in, in my belief, a false notion that you need to report all transactions in one form. Well, if, if I give an example, if I have a stock quota company in the U.S., um, underneath uh, the top holding, there's an operational headquarter which uh, subsequently holds the shares in three business units. Should I do a C by C at the stock quoted company? Should I do a C by C at the highest operational headquarter company? Or would it be sufficient to do a, a C by C for each of the business units? Um, if if uh, if we are correct, um, the alignment should be as follows. If you do create your global transpricing file, your master file for the business unit one, if then subsequently from that business unit one you have uh, country files, TP country files prepared, then it would make uh, functionally and geographically, it would make sense to have your C by C only focused on the transactions in business unit one. Uh, that's the uh, relevant functional and geographical slicing which makes the output, the C by C you're producing, relevant for the objective the OECD has, namely creating transparency. Um, another example on this, if you have five Swiss entities um, which uh, cover uh, three, the three business units I just mentioned, and one of those five is a treasury hub, then the, the literal interpretation of table one, country by country reporting, would require you to consolidate the five Swiss entity, its accounts, and its in the company transactions in one form. Well, that is, that is a typical typical case of shaken but not stirred, or the other way around, uh, you get a mess and you, th that table literally doesn't say anything. So our interpretation is uh, quite different, that the country by country doesn't mean a consolidation of those five Swiss legal entities in one form, uh, because functionally and geographically uh, that, that doesn't make sense with the first two layers of, of documentation. <laughs> Um, then a, a last point, practical point on this slide I want to address, what is the relationship between the C by C and the, the, the paper published by the, um, the G20 OECD just before Christmas on uh, profit splits in, in the case of global value chains? What is the relationship between those two? Um, the C by C is a re reality check, a TP risk assessment tool used by governments. That is something completely different than a profit split of an integrated uh, global value chain, uh, which you um, which you um, describe in in a global master file or a local country file, uh, based upon which the the compensation and the, the the profit split takes place. So I think those two worlds should be um, seen as two totally different worlds and, and, and a to totally different status of, uh, of those documents. Um, I would like to go to the next slide and also hand over to Igor. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, the next questions are really on the practicalities of compiling your uh, CBC. Who would be accountable for completion of the CBC of your group? Well, as this will be perceived as a 
tax compliance obligation, most likely the tax team or the TP team will be uh, obliged to uh, complete this, who will be accountable for the sign-off of the finalized uh, C by C. I think in line with uh, the good corporate governance, this will be the CFO who needs to sign off on the correctness and completeness of the C by C. Um, who will be accountable for reporting of the C by C to the tax authorities? Well, considering the three layers of documentation, and they will not be disclosed at the same time. Your master file, your local file will not be handed over every year. But the C by C seems to be uh, the obligation that needs to be filed annually at this moment. Also here, the head of tax or the head of the TP department is expected to be to report the C by C. Uh, what data sources need to be considered to be able to compile uh, C by C? Uh, first of all, an ERP uh, that will contain most data, and added to that, if required, the data the consolidated data from your consolidation package, and if not already maintained in your ERP system itself, you might need to uh, disclose data that's captured in your uh, HR database. How do you need to deal with uh, currencies when uh, compiling your C by C? Well, as you can see from the table, there is no column for different, uh, for mentioning the, the relevant currency. And I think in line with uh, the answer on question number one, what accounting standard are you using? Considering the purpose is transparency, most likely and most logical would therefore to be uh, to use uh, the functional currency the group is uh, using already. <coughs> And final question, how to consider uh, loss compensation from previous years? Uh, there is one column that mentions the cash tax being paid, and the next column is being the accrued tax. And from the difference you might be able to uh, recover whether or not NOLs are being uh, used or consumed. Yeah, this is questionable in the sense that uh, it also could mean um, that you have a high taxable income, but you have a preferential tax regime, and therefore your tax uh, is relatively low. So it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be your NOLs, which Hold will be. Uh, Okay. Well, thanks, uh, Igor. Um, I think with that, what we would like to uh, invite uh, Christian to uh, show his uh, his demo on uh, on real time uh, C by C reporting. Uh, the the tool we're showing you today has the capability of extracting uh, data from your ERP in such a manner that it would create, um, if necessarily, on a daily basis, a C by C reporting. Uh, but obviously you want to uh, handle the frequency yourself. Uh, with that, I, I hand over to um, to Christian. Uh, Christian? Uh, thank you, Steve. So uh, I will start by just pointing out to where the issue is. Uh, what is the, the point around the data you need for filling typically this uh, reporting duty? Uh, the fact is that the data needed for specific tax reporting very often doesn't exist at all. Or if it exists, then it's not in the right format, or you can't only hardly access it uh, on a timely manner. So uh, this sets the, the point what finally should be done. Um, from our perspective, by providing a solution, a, a practical mean for doing so, is ultimately to, to manage the entity and tax structure against uh, various data sources, uh, being, of course, uh, the GLs, but not only. As Igor mentioned, uh, there is additional data that needs to be retrieved, typically HR 
data uh, from HR databases or even other production systems could uh, provide uh, usable data for this purpose. So make it available for tax users to create the model and to report on that. On the other side, we need also to provide the user with an efficient environment uh, where they can uh, use uh, the data on, the, on a timely manner and uh, make it easy for their life. So our solution, uh, in fact, takes uh, the, the point from a financial management solution as a starting point and turn it to a usable tax data warehouse. Uh, it centralizes the data, the tax data. Uh, it retrieves the different uh, data sources and arranges this inside a single database. Then, on top of that, we add the capability to deploy calculations, uh, simulations, automations of various reporting processes. And then we provide the, the versatile and robust reporting that tax users are expecting. So in, if we follow a short process from source data, we load the source data, we collect, transform, and adapt this data for uh, a tax perspective. Then the tax group can calculate and monitor the various uh, entities within the group and ultimately produce the report. But it is also important to circle back again to the source data. Once you have an adjustment, you have to make sure that this adjustment is uh, accounted for in the various systems and then you can uh, from period over period make the circle again. From a more uh, architectural perspective, here you will recognize on the slide, uh, on the left side, the various data sources, ERP systems, being SAP, Oracle, or whatever, many other production systems, uh, spreadsheets, of course, manual entries, all the base data that is retrieved and loaded in this central data warehouse made of Hyperion Financial Management, in our case, and our add-on software. On the right side, you have the smart view reporting. This is an environment that allows the user uh, to do on his own the, a nice reporting that is straight to the point. And our example we will show today uses this technology. About the demo, what I want to mention very shortly is we want to fill this country by country report as it is uh, designed by the OECD proposal. And during the demo, we'll follow uh, the, the process of filling this document based on uh, the various data we are handling in our system. For not being lost during the demo, that's the, the global process of the demo. We have uh, a group, we are looking at a group that is consolidating the EMEA level. We have shared services in there, production entities and sales entities. And for filling this ultimate CPC report, we are executing the full process by first recharging some service charges from the shared services to the production entities. And then from the production entities, we are making a two-folded recharge on one side production costs of the goods and on the other side again a service charge for production support. So let me go to the system. This is the system uh, TPH where we have on the left side here a view on the model. Let me increase a little bit the size of the screen. So here we have the model uh, where we have a first level, where we have designed the global process I want to show to you today. So here you can recognize the different steps I just mentioned. The first recharge of the shared services to the production entities and then from the production entities to the sales entities. We do also a monitoring of uh, these recharges, meaning measuring what is the impact on 
all the different entities that are involved, as well as the impact on the bottom line of the company. Therefore, we are also executing a consolidation and a translation at the highest level for measuring the impact on the bottom line. Integrated, we will access the various reports. I will take the example of uh, this CPC report where we have the starting point. So here already some numbers are populating this report. You can recognize on the left side the tax jurisdictions, really based on the template of the OECD. We have slightly extended the view uh, that is provided by uh, adding uh, a few columns for making the distinction between the revenues of goods and the revenues of services. And this will show you the split between the internal service charges and the rest of the transactions of the group. During the demo, we will regularly refresh this report and see additional numbers coming in. Back to our system. What I want to show you in a little bit more detail is how this is set up and how it works. Here we have another process that shows just the first step. And focusing on this, we can now follow uh, easily the functionality of this. How was this made or created? On the left side here, we have a toolbox. This is a drag and drop system, very user friendly. You just drag and drop the icons on the workspace in the middle. And then for each element, you can add definitions, descriptions. You can even attach documents. This is important for documenting what you are doing, but it is also a way of keeping all relevant information together in one single place. Once you have set up this uh, little chart, uh, you can attach various things to this. If we double click now on this icon, it will take me directly to another part of the, our system, which is called the rule repository. This is typically the place where the tax group will start uh, creating ERKs of rules and classifying all the different uh, guidance on how internal uh, trade should be managed by this company. It is a hierarchy, so you have the principle of the hierarchies that applies, and one of these elements is typically that you can handle a large number of sub-elements in a hierarchy um, in one single click. If you go shortly to the lowest level here, we have this Switzerland IT recharge rule that is connected to a formula. And the formula will turn this rule into a data reality by applying the rule and making all the calculations. So a short view of this calculation. Again, this is very visual. Uh, things uh, are made the way that the user can just drag and drop icons from the left side and express his calculation logic in a very user-friendly way. The important point, and this is a huge difference with a spreadsheet approach, is this is a centralized system. As soon as you have set up a logic and you have tested it, you can apply this to a very large number of cases. And this provides also financial integrity, meaning you are writing the seller side and the buyer side at the same time. But Let's focus now on this CBC report, and I want to execute this first step. The first step, this once it is designed, it is also a coordination engine. And what I just started right now is the execution of this process. So the execution will go to the various subparts of the system, the rule repository, read the rules, do the calculations, and ensure the coordination between all these different steps. Coordination is important, especially when you have multiple trade entities inside your group that cross trades each to the other. So you have to make all the calculations in a very specific order to make sure that the cost base at each step is completed. Once it is executed, let's do a report. 
we have the first report is uh, this CBC report we want to fill in, but we have also many other ways to report. Uh, on this, we'll see this in the next step, uh, including going down to the intercompany um, invoices uh, you are able to set up based on this. The only thing I need to do now is to refresh this report. And here, I log in again for making sure that I have the appropriate user rights to read this information. And what you can see now here in the related party under revenue service, we have now this revenue for the Switzerland IT shared services that is written with uh, all the impact on all the rest of the group. So let's go to the next step. And by the way, this is also the last step of my demo for today. Now the production entities Poland will recharge to the sales entities very shortly. Same principle, another rule, another rule attached to another calculation. <clears throat> Here again, you can see the math very simply uh, expressed, very clear. You can also add documentation, also at the calculation level. Here we have a link to a document, but you can really freely attach documents or link uh, another uh, information system to this point for making really a connection to between the different rules, the different documentations. Once we execute this second process, same happens, coordination. By the way, we, it is also possible to launch the full process at once. Then it would do all the steps in the required order. At the end of this process, we will then also have a look at the intercompany position for this Polish uh, production entity. The consolidation here takes a little bit more time because it involves, in fact, the interaction with the consolidation system that will translate all entities to group currency and then make the consolidation, including all the elimination of the intragroup trade for having the net impact at the highest level of your company. So now uh, it is accomplished. So let's go again to another report just for retrieving the various informations. Let me refresh again this report. Here you have the summary of what happened during uh, these transactions. You can follow it from Switzerland IT. Here is an internal revenue that is booked with all the related intercompany costs. And same applies to the Polish manufacturing operation entity that has made a service recharge. And the service recharge here is accounted, in fact, as an intercompany invoice report. And from this report, it is very easy with additional automation uh, to create uh, the related invoice. So this is an example is an example of one invoice between Poland manufacturing operations and one specific sales entity, Denmark. Christian, meanwhile we have a question. Uh, what is your experience with segmental of the PNL for entities that are involved in multiple functions like manufacturing and distribution activities? Yeah, that's a very good point, and uh, this <laughs> allows me to introduce the second report. Uh, here in this example, we, again, we have some entities that have more than one function. If we take here, so it's on finance, typically is as well uh, a service uh, activity, but it is also an internal group finance activity. Our system uh, allows to collect any data and to transform and adapt the data to the purpose of tax reporting, meaning it is uh, essential to be able to express PLs in various structures at various 
subdivisions. So typically by function, by uh, business activity, by region, and so on. So that's that's really the nature of a multidimensional system is to be able to express all the different views. And all these different views can be held within one single system. When I'm showing here this uh, first report, here I have stopped the segmentation at the highest level between service revenue and product revenue. But behind, of course, I have a full product structure. I have also a full service, service catalog. In this service catalog, you could find finance activity, you could find uh, IT support activity, and so on. Let me go back to this first uh, CBC view, table one. Table one now will be refreshed, and we will see coming up all the rest of the transactions. And this shows now the full view from tax jurisdiction with the split of the revenue between unrelated party and related party. And you could assume that it would be possible to split this furthermore if you have additional details, typically the questions you have uh, raised uh, about uh, what are the different service activities, then you, can't, you could break it down to all this specific uh, service activities level if required. So this will come up also from the practice, and uh, Steve, I think you have uh, many things to add uh, as, a, as a guidance in which direction, in practicality, we should push this kind of reporting for fulfilling this uh, OECD uh, requirement. Yeah, I think the current uh, view uh, people and corporates uh, do have is that they can just take the revenue line and, and just cum accumulate goods uh, in the company goods, uh, services, and, and other flows into one number. I think if you do that, uh, obviously it doesn't mean anything anymore, and it, it gets blur it blurs the view on anyone who reads the form. Um, so we do believe that although it looks like the way OECD is presenting it as a very prescriptive, you have to follow this format type of approach, I think the split we made in the in the visual you have now on the on the on the screen with revenue goods versus revenue services at the level of the Polish plant uh, uh, delivering goods to the uh, to the sales subs on one side and delivering services uh, IT services to the sales subs on the other side d does make sense from a transparency perspective. Um, I do have to recognize um, some some voices that they say, okay, I, I, if I'm asked to accumulate all these uh, revenue lines into one go, I will do that. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure tax authorities will then push back and ask you for the, the, the breakdown of that accumulated number of, on, on, under the revenue column. So I, I do believe this is the way to go forward and to produce some basic transparency on, on the, the different type of flows. Steve, would you like to elaborate on the question? Yeah. Whether you, you can be more specific, how to allocate revenue from manufacturing activities from distribution activities? Well, if you have in this example, if you have IT costs from Switzerland who get on charge to, to a Polish plant and the Polish plant uh, say this is an, uh, a CAD CAM system uh, an IT related cost uh, to that are then subsequently on charge to, to uh, the, the sales subs uh, as being one uh, individualized uh, flow Switzerland Poland uh, uh, sales subs if next to that you have uh, Poland producing uh, goods uh, which they charge, say, let's assume at a cost plus 40 to the sales subs, then that will be your separate flow. And then obviously the notion there is uh, which cost uh, needs to be allocated to what segment of the P&L. But I, I think that's a pretty basic accounting, although it might in practice be a little bit more uh, complex uh, depending on, on your 
uh, administrative system. We do see these segmentations uh, happen a lot, and, and finance and IT people and organizations are quite able and, um, and, and capable of, uh, of producing these segmented uh, tables. In addition to that, our system centralizes this kind of information and makes good use of all these drivers that are available inside the company. Back to this report, here we have this number of employees that is mentioned. Uh, this is specifically used in our example for uh, Cal calculating the apportionment of the service charges between Poland manufacturing operations and uh, the different sales entities. This is based on the headcount of the sales entities, while the rest of the allocation uses a completely different driver. So that's also the, the, something that is very efficient, keeping all this information together in one system that uh, allows to automate and to secure the transformation of the data for this uh, specific CBC report. Um, Christian, the, the, the question in our discussion with, uh, with uh, some of the policymakers in OCD, but also some of the corporates, if you have a corporate structure uh, which obviously has some shareholder relationship, has multiple shareholders or a joint venture type of structure, uh, the, the notion is a little bit you have from the highest operational uh, company downwards, you have a, the, the typical Christmas tree on which you would apply the C by C reporting. Uh, the OCD has some some dilemmas to deal with. Uh, to to what extent should it involve the shareholder relationships, so shareholder loans, uh, shareholder services, um, treasury services, for example, happening out of the the shareholder group, uh, especially when it's not a clear single shareholder, um, the, the pyramid on top of, uh, of the highest operational company, how to deal with that in, in, in particular, I think the OCD should leave that up to the companies. Uh, in my view, the highest operational companies is, is the company where you should start. I don't see a need for disclosing at this stage the variety of shareholders relationships especially in the case these shareholders relationships are mul are a multitude uh, have multiple shareholders through various structures uh, for for other reasons than transporting I do not see this form to be equipped for capturing that uh, and be relevant for transporting yeah, from our point of view, I would say that uh, if you can do the most, then you can do the least. Uh, so once you have this information available, uh, you can report on each single entity, but you can then also uh, take additional uh, uh, elements into consideration, uh, typically like the, the shareholder structure you are mentioning. If required, as you hold this information, then you can make a good use of it in case of need. This means not, of course, preparing everything in advance and reporting in all directions, but then you could also interact with the system in a very dynamic way and uh, retrieve this information and produce quickly a real ad hoc report in case you have a specific question coming up from a tax authority. So it's not only producing an end document you can print out, it is also keeping this data alive the way you can report on a on a on a daily day day by day um, process of this and keep the information available over very long periods typically uh, 5 years or longer okay very good uh, christian any final points on on the on the demo no i'm um, basically i'm done i, I just want to I wanted to show how easy it is in fact to start once you have centralized this information and you are, you are able to execute all those processes on the fly, then it is ultimately easy to produce very specific reports, even if the perspective of this reporting is completely new in the market now. So what you're saying is uh, that if you have fresh data today, you can run a C by C 
um, uh, this this very hour. Uh, if you have fresh data tomorrow, you can do the same. So it becomes real time C by C reporting depending on the frequency you need. Yeah, absolutely, and and I would say that maybe the most uh, interesting aspect is you can do a simulation of what would be your CBIC report in future, and I think this fits to to what should be on the agenda this year is uh, testing. Uh, what is the impact of having a CBC report for each company, and then. Uh, Assessing, in fact, all the risk points you, have, you mentioned uh, in your introduction, making sure then uh, that, that in 2016, when it goes real, uh, you have the right information and you have fully mastered all the risks that you are taking by disclosing this kind of information the way the OECD wants it. Excellent, uh, Christian. Uh, I think uh, with, with that, I, uh, that there, there's, you can distinguish free trails uh, if you, you're a corporate, you need to deal with that is the collection of data, or typically the IT and finance and tax transfer pricing teams are involved. Uh, then a second thing, which is more governance uh, driven, who in your organization signs off on the integri integrity of that data, um, at, that, at which stage it becomes almost inevitable to have a system, a software system like this uh, running the data points because if you run this on a on a spreadsheet basis, who assures the CFO who has to sign off eventually um, on on this data or the head of tax that the integrity of the data is uh, is fully fully being honored at at all times? Uh, that's that's a challenge if you run all these scenarios on a, on a spreadsheet or an Excel base. Uh, even uh, to the to the level of being lethal. Why? Because this data, right after sign off, goes to goes into the hands of the opposite party, being the tax inspector. Um, so you have the collection of data. You have the sign off uh, governance uh, model around the integrity of the data. And the third layer of uh, of activity you need to be worried about is the uh, the disclosure. Uh, because the disclosure and that sort of the test run uh, Christian is referring to immediately puts you in the risk management mode. So that means doing a few test runs this year um, with or without the detailed uh, in instruction manual OECD is, uh, has planned to, uh, to publish uh, before summer is uh, going to be essential because it will disclose risks with the various uh, uh, various slicings of this C by C reporting, you need to be able to explain, and you need to, um, in uh, a lot of cases, also to account for in your tax provisioning game. Uh, so this this becomes uh, slightly a different game after you've done the collection, you've done the sign off, then the whole disclosure and the risk management around it is really the the, the last but not the least bit of uh, of, of your activities. With that, I think we, we move to uh, our last slide. Um, let me see one further down, I think, slide nine. Uh, Igor, yeah. you want to sort of say what the checklist is uh, people need to, to deal with? Yeah, we, we uh, already compiled a preliminary to-do checklist to start with uh, CBC. I think step one, prepare a collection strategy, including making a source map which details the various data sources you might need information from. Um, you will need to appoint a member to lead the whole C by C process, most likely somebody from the tax or TP team. You might consult or appoint an IT person to consider any possible required new investments in IT systems if you're not able to uh, extract the uh, data. Appoint a finance person to take on the accounting controllership role for the C by C. You might need to appoint a legal or TP person to double check all the underlying legal documentation. And so far, you are not able to extract directly the HR data, you might need to appoint an HR person 
and make him responsible for providing your uh, employee numbers. Um, and appoint a staff member to ensure the consistency and validation of the information you've retrieved. Uh, perhaps need run some uh, samples on uh, data you have compiled. And that will be then the sign off to the CFO. Inform him and appoint him so he can sign off the C by C report. And last but not least, appoint the person, the tax person most likely, to report the compiled C by C report to the tax authorities. Yeah, as a point uh, on the HR, you have uh, like the like the Hyperion system uh, in a lot of cases has the the people count the FTEs. Uh, if, if obviously if you put that into the system, you can retrieve it out of the system. So if you don't put it in, obviously it will not it will not be retrievable. But we see a lot of uh, Hyperion uh, users having access to HR data, but then the data is uh, is. Uh, configured in such a way that one legal entity has 10 cost centers uh, to each of the cost centers there's a number of people allocated uh, th that is not always giving you a, a good insight of what keeps those people busy whether they're busy with production whether they're busy with uh, services and what type of services so it, it would require some some more functional descriptions almost from your HR department at that stage to clarify what that person is doing on a daily basis. And and that's where also this, this link with your HR system comes into play. Um, I have a few closing remarks uh, on, on the system where I, I would say uh, as, as part of the checklist, uh, get your collection of data points organized before summer um, with finance and IT involved because this this C by C reporting is has, is more even more than the regular transfer pricing uh, it requires a team effort um, get clarity on who will be signing off on the on the integrity of the, of the data points so have your organizational best practices like a TP TP control framework established um, uh, if if not already uh, you have a tax control framework uh, without the details on transfer pricing make sure for transfer pricing it's clear who is dealing with each of these three layers and where the third layer is the C by C uh, where the specific sign off I would expect as part of the organizational best practices is who eventually is accountable for the integrity of this data which goes into the wide open uh, it has almost the same status as someone uh, within the organization signing a tax return the only difference is now you sign a disclosure of information points which goes to all tax inspectors in the whole world so you're signing, um, well, I can't say an international tax return but because that would uh, uh, disqualify or qualify the, the C by C uh, format differently than I, uh, than I stated in the beginning. But it, it is a very critical point to deal with. Um, from the disclosure channels, um, I think it's very important. Once you put your whole value chain um, in in, uh, in numbers on the table with each and every of the tax inspectors uh, well do a few dry runs and see whether you you, you um, if you were a tax inspector you would uh, have very critical questions but also think along the lines of what risk mitigation strategy should I start already this year uh, to avoid um, I, I get nasty questions uh, next year so is there any uh, discrepancy in the tables you report um, and would you need to go for for an ISO certification on your TP documentation? Would you need to go for APA trails uh, or even uh, beyond that what, what we are seeing in, uh, in the light of the European Commission coming up with, uh, with state aid and thereby disclosing a lot of data points 
and, and facts on certain taxpayers into the public domain, um, you want to avoid at, at any given time that these data sets, uh, the, the C by C uh, lands into a public domain. I think that was one of the points uh, uh, Luan brought up as well. So the three um, critical steps are collection of data, uh, sign off, and disclosure, uh, have your act together and, and uh, be ready for it. And, and it's still roughly 11 months to till, till due date. So that's that's sort of a, a, a reasonable time for uh, for most corporates, but you probably need the time, especially on the on the first uh, first element of collection. Well, with this, um, we uh, we are on the at the time of uh, of closure. Uh, thank you very much for uh, participating and uh, to this uh, to this webinar of TPA. We would like to welcome you again later this year on uh, various other topics. We will. Uh, launch to the market. Um, thanks again. You will be sent um, a follow-up on, on this. And uh, uh, again, have a nice day and uh, see you next time.